Good morning, my darlings. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord one more time in fellowship with you as we are about to engage in prayers this morning. This is the Protocol Breaking Prayer Platform, the altar of prayer by the Word of God, with the Word of God, all through the Word of God. So please make sure you are hitting those share buttons, those like buttons, and make sure you are subscribing to the channel that you are watching me from. Make sure that you are following me on all social media channels and as I get through all that admin up front. I just want to tell you, you are loved by God. You're amazing. And you are about to be a recipient of an 11th hour miracle. So welcome to the PBP. If you hit that subscribe button, God will bless you abundantly. If you share, God will give you double extra blessings in Jesus mighty name. As you are coming in, as you are writing on the comment section, make sure you're remaining active so that we are praying out together. We, I, I can see that you are participating i want you to write on your screen activate an 11th hour miracle activate an 11th hour miracle come on somebody welcome to pvp one more time let us raise it up for jesus my god you are blessing you are a blessing my god you are truly a to be exalted, my God. You are amazing, God. You're an amazing God. We give you praise, honor, and adoration. We glorify your holy name in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. There is a scripture that I've been brooding on. I've been sitting on the book of Matthew chapter 20 for the past, I don't know how many weeks, and I'm probably going to preach and teach and pray in many dimensions coming from this scripture and talk about the 11th hour because I'm very excited. Something is definitely brewing in the spirit. The Bible says that about the 11th hour, he went out and found still others standing idly around. And he asked them, why have you been standing here all day and doing nothing? Hallelujah. Why are you standing around and doing nothing as if you've got no purpose, as if you've got no direction? Because, and they, they, they answered, they said, because no one has hired us we don't have because no one has hired us you know um and 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 they're waiting on on something they're waiting on something and 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 he said to them he said you also go and you also work in my vineyard he gave them a task ah so that gave me a thought that honestly there are some people who are absolutely probably yes at this time of the year, you're thinking, what could possibly happen? I mean, there's nothing else that can happen. This thing is a done deal. This thing is gone. And these guys who were just standing around and the the master who came to give them a job and asked them, why are you standing around? I don't think they, they thought that there could be somebody who just comes and gives them a job just like that. But a miracle happened at the 11th hour. At the 11th hour, the last became the first at the 11th hour. So these are the things where I'm just pausing and I'm asking God, I'm like, so you can come through at the 11th hour. So it's never over. I think in opera they say this, it's never o- over until the, the fat lady sings. It's not over. It's not over. There is a place for 11th hour Christians But the 11th hour Christians also need to get to the the program. They need to get ready. When opportunity knocks, they need to get ready. So my question this morning, are you an 11th hour Christian? So in this parable that we see in the book of Matthew chapter 20, the parable about the kingdom of God, Jesus, in that parable that speaks about the kingdom of God, described the last generation before his return. He described a group of people who were standing around doing nothing. People who were idle and non-productive. Jesus revealed God's plan for these people. Get to work in the vineyard. That's the instruction. What are you standing around for? Don't say there's no work. Create work. Don't stand around. God says, come to the vineyard. Let's work. It's still the 11th hour. And God continues to look to the laborers who will go after his harvest. The harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. So God is expecting me and you to rise. God is expecting me and you to rise and fight. And God is expecting me and you to rise and expand his kingdom. In our prosperity, in our expansion, we are expanding his kingdom. 
Jesus is still seeking workers, child of God, who will work in the vineyard. Jesus is still working and looking for fishes of men in Jesus' mighty name. In these last days, he's looking for idle people who are willing to start. Who are willing to start using who using what they have, the capacity they have, who are willing to start to, to, to put their hands to dirt and get their hands greasy, to break a sweat. So what am I saying? I'm saying God is looking for your, your yes. It is looking for your yes. If you're willing to work, we will not be idle anymore. We will not be just standing around anymore. We will not be wasting time. God is looking for those who have been wasting time. God is, is saying, I'm looking for those who are producing little or those who are producing no fruit. God is looking for those who are doing nothing. Why not throw caution to the wind and get busy serving God? Why not work in the vineyard of God and see what he will do? Sometimes truly to unlock certain blessings. You will want what you want and you want to pause God's agenda. But God says, you will push my agenda first. Why not be bold and share the love of God and the good news of Jesus? There are those who are lost, who are weary out there in the world. They are waiting. They are scattered sheep that are waiting to be brought back to the flock. You have people in your sphere of influence. You have not reached out to a potentially 11th hour Christian that still needs to enter the kingdom of God. Listen to what Jesus says. But when he saw the multitudes... He was moved with compassion for them. Does anything move you that moves God? Because they were weary and they were scattered. He was moved by compassion. When you see broken people, does it move you? He said to his disciples, The harvest is truly plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray ye the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. That broken child, that child under addiction is waiting for a laborer in the harvest. He's, a, he's waiting in the harvest. He's waiting for a laborer to come through and get him. I don't know about you, child of God, but I'm stirred up. I'm fired up and I'm more passionate about searching and reaching out to the lost doing my part in the kingdom of God, in the building of the Lord's church, preparing for his return. And I want to urge you this morning, amongst all the things we are yet to still pray for, that God will make you a faithful laborer. That you will give the Lord your 100% and 110 and 150. And that you will do everything you can do to reap his harvest. You will do everything you can to reach out to the precious fruit of God that is scattered around the earth. The lost, the broken, those who are in your sphere of influence. Nobody is permitted to die around you. I don't know whether you are excited like me. Are you excited? If you are excited, be advised. Yes, it might not be easy. Yes, it might take a lot of effort. It might... Be some flack. You may be labeled. You may be misunderstood. You may be criticized. You may be saying it is hard, but you have to pull. It may be inconvenient, but you still have to pull. People will say mean things. You still have to move. That comes with the territory. So, it will not be easy, but it will be worth it. When we walk in the vineyard of God, it's not always fun, it's not always pretty, but the rewards are plenty. In the mighty name of Jesus. Remember, we serve a loving and a generous God. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early morning hired men to work, agreed to pay them a certain fee. And he did so. The others came late. They came at the 11th hour. They thought they were forgotten. They thought that it was time out. But God remembered them. Father, remember me today. I'm done with being idle. I'm done with doing nothing. I'm done being non-productive. 
I commit to being an 11th hour Christian who's ready to serve you and open up your mouth, child of God. Commit yourself to God and tell him, I'm ready to serve you with my whole heart. I'm ready to work in your vineyard. I'm ready to reap the rewards and reap the harvest. I, I'm going after the precious fruit of the earth. Hallelujah. I'm going to become a fisher of men in Jesus' mighty name. I'm going to reach out to the lost in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I thank you for the energy, the grace, the wisdom. I thank you for the help that I need to serve you, my God, in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you for being so generous, my God, in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I praise you. I give you glory. I praise you in advance for what you're about to do for me and through me in Jesus' name. When God remembers you, child of God, your situation changes. Your circumstances change. They were standing around there. They said, no man hath hired us. We don't even know whether we are coming or going, but God. But God remembered them. Somebody shout in the comment section, but God remembered. God remembered. God remembered. Everyone that God remembers, he always makes sure that they have a testimony. You shall have a testimony. If you tag on your, on your neighbor and say, I will testify in Jesus' name. The Bible says in the book of Genesis 8, 1, and God remembered Noah. When you trek again to the book of Genesis chapter 19, the Bible says that God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow. So that means there was a package deal. Your family gets remembered. Your family gets saved all along. Exodus chapter 2, verse 24, the God that, that heard the groanings of the children of Israel, he remembered the covenant that he had with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And you trek again, you, you get to Exodus chapter 6, verse 4. Five, the Bible says, I have also heard the groanings of the children of Israel whom the Egyptians have oppressed and kept in bondage. And I've remembered my covenant. God says, I'm remembering you because I see you crying. I see that your pillow is wet. I think that I see that things are not happening. Things are very tough, but there is an 11th hour miracle that is being released this morning. And so don't wait until you see something in the physical. Just praise me in advance and I will show you that I'm a wonder working God. When you praise God in advance, it's an invitation for him that he cannot resist. He cannot turn it down. He has to visit you. Hallelujah. The Bible says that God visited Sarah in the book of Genesis 21. And he did unto Sarah as he had said he was going to do. My father, as we are praying this morning, we are asking, oh God, that we are also going to get this visitation, my God. And Lord, that you will do as you said you would, what you will do for us in Jesus' mighty name. So when you're wanting to activate the 11th hour miracle child of God, there are certain steps that we will go through this morning. But the last step to the delivery of your Isaac is praise. I want you to underline and not forget this. Praise is what will unlock the delivery of your Isaac. He may not come through or look like he's coming through when you are praying, but when you switch to praise, God answers prayer, but in praise he comes down immediately. He inhabits. He cannot turn down. The Bible says in Romans um, chapter 4, verse 20, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Abraham staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. He was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Don't look at your age. Don't look at the circumstances. Don't look at the symptoms. Praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto God, for it is pleasant and praise is calmly. It is good to give praises. Praises is calmly. Praise is not just dancing child of God, but you should praise God with an understanding because he envelopes you when you praise him. He envelopes you when you praise him. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing ye praises and understanding, says the psalmist in 47. And the psalmist in 22 says, But thou art holy, that thou art holy. You are holy. Oh, you who inhabits the praises of your people, Israel, so if you want God to come down on you, then praise needs to be one of your understandings. The tragedy is that you can be in church and not be in touch. You can be in church and not be in touch. 
So we want to unlock the touch. The touch of God. God is about to visit you. 11th hour. 11th hour. Everyone that looked down on you will look up to you. They will look up to you. The book of Revelation 21. And I heard a great voice of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of the Lord is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all their tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. God's tabernacle is in praise. God's tabernacle is in praise. Are you hearing these scriptures? Jesus. So why should you praise God? Because you want to activate the 11th hour miracle. It's that simple. Your miracle can never be released without your mouth. Your miracle cannot be released without your mouth. Proverbs 12, 14 says, A man will be satisfied with good from the fruit of his words, and the deeds of a man's hands will return to him as a harvest. Okay. Then 13, 2 of Proverbs says, From the fruit of his mouth, a wise man enjoys good things. If you're wise. But the desire of the treacherous is for violence. Proverbs 18.20 says, A man's stomach will be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. He will be satisfied with the consequences of the words that he says. That's why we need to watch our mouth. Through him, therefore, let us at all times offer up to God a sacrifice of praise, which is the fruit of lips, that thankfully acknowledges and confesses and glorifies his name. Let me read it one more time. Hebrews 13, 15 says, Through him, let us offer up to God a sacrifice of praise, which is the fruit of lips that thankfully acknowledge and confess and glorify his name. So it means that all the promises of God can only be fulfilled by a praise that is by our lips. So for me to experience the 11th hour miracle, I need to give God a sacrificial praise. When you please God in the area of praise, all pressures are turned into pleasures. Let me say that one more time. When you please God in the area of praise, all that is pressurizing you becomes a pleasure. Never mind what is happening, mind what is written. Let me say that one more time. Do not mind what is happening. Mind what is written. It is written. Never wait for a miracle to happen before you praise God, but you thank God for the miracle to be born. In Jesus' mighty name, I thank you for the miracle to be born. In Jesus' name. How do I activate this 11th hour miracle, Pastor Fortune? What is this 11th hour miracle that you're talking about? It's the latest possible time before it's too late. The latest last number, last minute, last minute, last minute, last minute. Last minute. You will still receive full return, full package. The 11th hour miracle is a miracle you get when it looks like time is running out. It appears just as about as you're about to pack your, your bags and say, I'm going home empty-handed. Imagine the workers hired at the 11th hour, how they felt when they received their wages. They didn't know that there was still an hour more that they could get work. They probably were very ecstatic and happy. Whatever it is that you're dealing with, you can activate your 11th hour miracle. Remember, you cannot give up. You cannot walk away. You can't give up and you can't walk away. From reading that chapter of Matthew 20, why would you run away and walk away and count yourself out? 
Don't give up. Don't leave the arena. Stay there. Stay there. They stayed, they worked, they waited for the landowner to come. And they were hired, they were paid. For to him that is joined to all the living there is hope. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. It's better to hope. You know, sometimes when we give God ultimatums and we walk away as if we've got anything else better to walk to. No, 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 no. I better hope in God and stay in God. And what I've been saying up until now is that you activate your 11th hour miracle through an earthquake of praise. The earthquake through praise, the same earthquake that released Paul and Silas from prison when they sang praises to the Lord. Come on, somebody. An earthquake of praise that enabled Lazarus to be raised from the dead. Thank you, Jesus. No matter what has been proclaimed, a lost cause in your life, there is no closed case. They may call you a lost cause, but it's not a closed case. Somebody say it's not a closed case. This case is not closed. It may look like I'm lost, but I'm, it's not a closed case. It's not a shut case. A great earthquake is about to take place. Angels are about to roll away the stones, Lazarus. Even if doctors have told you your sickness is incurable and is unto death. Even if the lawyers have told you that you have lost your case. God can give you justice. God can give you justice. You want to have a child? You are told it's too late. You are told about fibroids. You are told about all these complications. You are told that you need to take out your womb. It's not too late. They told you your matter is dead and buried. A great earthquake can take place. A great earthquake can take place. An angel of the Lord will come and roll back the stone and sit on it. You can trigger an earthquake. Trigger an earthquake through praise. The same with Paul and Silas. Trigger an earthquake. A spiritual earthquake that will bring about dramatic deliverance and breakthrough in Jesus' name. You can do as Paul and Silas did. You can trigger an earthquake that will open up the tomb, that will shake the foundations of the prison, that will open the doors of the prison, that will loose every chain and restriction that you may have. Thank you, Jesus. When you don't know what to do, praise God. When you don't know what to do, praise God. In the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 20, Jehoshaphat and God's people had a serious challenge. Different armies were attacking them and taking them to battle. In verse 12, let me read the scripture for you. It says, O oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us. Nor do we know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. And they decided to praise God. Our eyes are upon you. We don't know how to do anything else, but our eyes are upon you and we're going to praise you. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should pr uh, praise the beauty of his holiness as they went out before the army was saying, praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Now when they began to sing and to and sing praises to the Lord, the Lord set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab and Mount Seir who had come against Judah. And they were defeated. So just from a simple act of praise, now you begin to see that God begins to fight their battles and settles them. Hallelujah. Let the people praise your God. Let all the people praise you. Let, let the earth yield its increase. God, our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Praise produces blessings. Praise produces blessings, the kind that make the whole earth, the whole earth fear him. Praise makes God fight for you. Praise makes God turn things around for you. 
as you praise God, he will bless you and give you an 11th hour miracle. How do I activate this 11th hour blessing and 11th hour miracle, Pastor Fortune? Through prayer and through fasting. Paul and Silas prayed, we are told. In the book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 6, the Bible says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, make sure that you with thanksgiving, you let your requests be known to God with thanksgiving. That is why I always ask you, what are you thankful for? Not come and complain to God and give him his, your list. What are you thankful for? Then you make your request. You make your request through thanksgiving. So in the Bible, you see, you come across people who had different challenges at different seasons in their lives, begging the question, fasting and prayer. People like Esther who called in the fast because they said, I've been called for such a time as this. What good is it that I'm eating and eating and eating? Meanwhile, my nation could be obliterated any minute. Daniel fasted the people of Nineveh. Why are you not fasting? Look at what God said about fasting in the book of Isaiah chapter 58. Is this not the fast that I have chosen to lose the bonds of wickedness? So there is a fast that loosens, loosens the bonds of wickedness. To undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free and that the break, that the yoke will be broken there because of that. Is it not the, to share the, your bread with the hungry and you bring to your house the poor who are cast out? When you see the naked that you cover him and not hide yourself from your own flesh. Then your light shall break forth like the morning. Your light, just for you taking care of the poor. Imagine. Your healing shall spring forth speedily and your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. So when you fast and when you pray, it loosens the bonds of wickedness. It removes burdens. It destroys oppression. Yokes are broken when you engage in fasting and prayer. It results in what? breakthroughs and miracles so I heard pray and fast as you present the matter to God and see God give you your 11th hour miracle even a one day fast can change don't feel obligated that you have to do 40 days fast because you are trying to copy somebody let it be led by the spirit of God number four how do you activate this 11th hour miracle Employ the mystery of thanksgiving. God loves people who are grateful. Even me, when you're not grateful, you, it's, it's annoying. I just switch off and I don't do. doesn't matter how much you ask me. The manner in which you ask matters. Hallelujah. When you read the account of how Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, you will see that before he raised Lazarus from the dead, he thanked God. He says, Father, I thank you. And Lazarus rose from the dead. When you read the book of Matthew chapter 14, verse 13 to 21, you see that Jesus thanked God and supernaturally five loaves of bread was able to feed 5,000 and more people. You need to give God intense thanksgiving, heartfelt thanksgiving, real genuine thanksgiving, thanking for what he's done, thanking, thank him for what bringing you this far. Thank him for keeping you alive. You could have been in a mortuary already. Thank him for what he has done and also thank him for what he's about to do. Hallelujah. The next point that you need to activate to, to or what you need to do to activate the 11th hour miracle is to apply your faith. Faith it. Remember it is unto you according to your faith. Not according to Pastor Fortune's faith. I can have all the faith I want for you. But what is your faith level? You need to have faith in God. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Without faith it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a reward of those that diligently seek him. Jesus prayed and often said, be it unto you according to your faith, or your faith has made you well. Hallelujah. In Matthew 9, 29 to 30, sorry I'm giving you too many scriptures today, but I believe that it's good that we soak in the word. 
he touched their eyes saying according to your faith let it be to you and their eyes were open nothing is impossible according to your faith nothing is impossible nothing is impossible to a person who believes a person who believes can obtain that 11th hour miracle see kadiaba shoto kudiaba i see miracles coming through in the book of mark chapter 9 he says unto them if you can believe all things are possible to him who believes All things are possible to him who believes. How do I activate this 11th hour miracle? I'm rushing for time, but let me see how much I can squeeze in. Find the relevant scriptures and declare them. The whole world was created by the word of God. So when you declare the word of God in any particular situation, you command the word of God in Jesus mighty name. You command everything to align to the word of God. It will obey you. Never mind how the situation looks right now. By faith we understand that the worlds were formed by the word of God so that the things which are seen and those which are not or, or, or the things which are not or, are, are seen are made from the things which are unseen. So they come into visibility from invisibility. I bring what I'm doing in the spirit into the physical in Jesus mighty name. So I begin to search the scriptures I begin to search the word of God. that applies to the situation that I'm dealing with at that point and I begin to proclaim it and I begin to command it I begin to see the situation change to align with the word of God You want fruitfulness of the of the body There is a scripture for that No one shall suffer miscarriage or be barren in your land I will fulfill the number of your days You stand Father I stand on Exodus chapter 23 verse 26. I don't care what the doctors have said. I don't care that they say I'm going to be barren. I stand on your word. Your word says in Exodus 23 verse 26. No one shall suffer miscarriage or be barren. No one shall suffer miscarriage or be barren in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You shall be blessed above all peoples. There shall not be male or female barren among you among your livestock. Father, I stand on Deuteronomy 7:14. None shall be barren among me. None shall be barren among me. None shall be barren in Jesus mighty name. Father, I stand on Psalm 84:11. Kaniya masunda. For the Lord is my sun and my shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from him who walks uprightly. I am walking uprightly, O oh God. No good thing is supposed to be withheld from me. No good thing is supposed to be delayed from me in Jesus' mighty name. I am the blessed of God. I am a candidate for 11th hour miracle. And the Lord will grant you plenty of goods in fruit and the fruit of your body in the increase of your livestock in the produce of your ground in the land of which the Lord swore to you and your fathers to give you Father I stand on Deuteronomy 28:11 You said you will give me land You will give me ground you will give me goods that are in plenty How do I activate this 11th hour miracle? You activate the 11th hour miracle by pleading the blood of Jesus. That is the power that is applied from the word of Jesus. The blood of Jesus can cause an 11th hour miracle every day. By the blood of Jesus we have redemption. By the blood of Jesus we have forgiveness of sins. We have victory by the blood of Jesus. we overcome him by the blood of Jesus and the words of our testimonies we overcome satan by the blood of Jesus as we apply the blood of Jesus we overcome the attacks and resistance of the lord in Jesus mighty name how do i apply this blood of Jesus pastor revelations 12:11 says that believers overcame satan by the blood of Jesus and by the word of their testimony in other words by their confession So you confess it. Don't hold on to your testimony. We overcome by pleading the blood of Jesus. To plead the blood of Jesus means to present it as evidence. You redeemed me for this. This is the evidence. You told me this is what is going to happen. So the blood of Jesus grants the believer 
deliverance. The blood of Jesus grants the believer forgiveness. The blood of Jesus grants the believer redemption. The blood of Jesus grants the believer protection. The blood of Jesus grants the believer healing. Hallelujah. Healing is your portion. Thank you, Jesus. We bind the devil. We lose our blessings. That is how we activate the 11th hour miracle. Bind the devil. Lose your blessings. The word of God says in the book of Matthew 18, Assuredly, I say unto you, whatsoever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven in Jesus' mighty name. So it doesn't matter what, whatever the occurrences that the devil is plotting against you. When you're a believer, you have been given the right to bind the devil and lose your blessings in Jesus' mighty name. So go ahead. Use the name of Jesus. He gave it to you. Name drop it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And lastly, you employ the mystery of sacrifice. It's a, it's a mystery that not many Christians apply. I think because of the narrative that is happening in the body of Christ right now, where people are afraid to talk about the substance of your labor, that seeds still break the fallow ground. Solomon sacrificed and the Lord visited him. We are told this in the book of 2 Chronicles 6 12. So if you are a candidate that is looking for God's visitation, could it be? What is your sacrifice? Once you catch this, it works for the people that have caught it. David made a sacrifice and God decided to end the plague that was released on Israel. So a sacrifice can turn things around. How do you raise an altar of sacrifice today? through the fruit of your labor, what you have earned. And how do you do this? You can give to your local church. You can give to a ministry that preaches a word of God and you know that this is another. Other. Do something for God in essence. Let me just summarize it like that. Give to God through a budget. Identify where God is at work and you sow in there. Amen, somebody. You don't need to announce to the whole world what you have done. Do it in secret. What you do in secret, your father will reward openly. God is faithful. He's able to do all things. So I trust that as you have followed and you tracked with me this morning through the scriptures of the word, that you understand what you need to do to activate the 11th hour miracle. God bless you. See you tomorrow at 5 a.m. Thank you so much for listening. I'm sorry it was a long teaching today, but I believe that it was a blessing. So remember to drop a comment as you're coming in, whether even for the replay, it's good to read your comments and see your excitement and see that you're growing. God bless you. Take care.